Let's have a look at the human defense force. As you can see here, I have two of the same basic squads, which you have to take them by three models, and that's an infantry squad. Now, these infantry squads, they have a quality of five up, a defense of five up. They are armed with an assault rifle that shoots 24 inches and has an attack of one. They all both have a close combat weapon, which also has an attack of one and I have upgraded uh, one model with a sniper rifle which was uh, 15 points now the sniper rifle goes for 36 inches has one attack and AP1 and also has the sniper ability and that was a total of 50 points now we have that two times then we also as you can see have a battle sister who has a quality of 4 up a defense of 3 up she is armed with an assault rifle same as with the infantry squad, it shoots 24 inches, has one attack. She also has a close combat weapon with one attack, and she is upgraded with Celestial Infantry, which was 5 more uh, points. Now, what that means is this model gets plus 1 to all its attack rolls, both melee or shooting. And this battle sister is worth 25 points. And here we have our Temple Brother, or Assault Brother, who has a quality of 3 up, a defense of 2 up, and he's armed with an assault rifle, with same as the others, 24 inches, 1 attack, and he has a close combat weapon, which I upgraded it to an energy sword, which has 2 attacks, it has AP1 and the rending ability. Now I've also upgraded him extra with a combat shield for, two, for 10 more points, which has the ability shield wall, uh, which means enemies get minus 1 to hit this unit, and he uh, also has the ability Fearless, and he's 45 points in total. Later in the game, at the third round, uh, these are joined with six, six more Battle Brothers and a Captain. Now, each of the Battle Brothers is the same. Uh, they have not been upgraded, and they have a quality of 3 up, a defense of 2 up. They are armed with assault rifles that shoot 24 inches and have one attack. They also all have a close combat weapon of one attack. They uh, have the fearless ability and they are worth 30 points per model. Now for the captain however, um, he has a quality of 3 up, a defense of 2 up. He has been upgraded with a storm rifle which was 5 points. Uh, it shoots 24 inches, has uh, 2 attacks and I've also upgraded his close combat weapon for 5 points and switched it out for an energy sword which also has 2 attacks, an armor piercing of 1 and rending ability. He also has the ability fearless, relentless, hero and he is a model of tough 3 which means he has uh, 3 wounds. Now the total points for the captain was 100, 100 points. bringing the total of the human defense force to a, uh, 390 points. And for now, let's have a look at the Havoc Brothers. There are three regular Havoc Brothers, uh, no upgrades, that have a quality of 3 up, a defense of 2 up, an assault rifle that shoots 24 inches and has one attack. Uh, they also all carry of course a close combat weapon with one attack and each of these Havoc Brothers are 25 points total.
As here we can see the As cultists. for the cultists, uh, you have to take them by three models, just the same like with the infantry squad. Uh, they are 25 points total per tree, and they have a quality of 5 up, a defense of 6 up, armed with assault rifles that shoot 24 inches and have one attack. Also, they carry a close combat weapon with one attack. And here we can see a Havoc Destroyer. Now this monstrosity has a quality of 3 up, a defense of 2 up, he carries twin assault rifles that shoot 24 inches and have 2 attacks, he has a close combat weapon which I've upgraded for an energy fist that was uh, 5 points, which has 2 attacks, it has armor piercing of 3, but it also has ambush and tough 3 which means it has 3 wounds and it's 90 points total. Next to it, standing, is Havoc Lord. The Havoc Lord has a quality of 3 up, a defense of 2 up, he's been upgraded with a plasma pistol, and his close combat weapon is also upgraded. Both of those were 5 points. Now the plasma pistol shoots 12 inches, has 1 attack, but has an armor piercing of 2. Uh, the energy sword that he's also been upgraded with, has two attacks, an armor piercing of one, and the rending ability. Now he also has the abilities Relentless, Hero, and Tough Tree, which means he has three wounds. And he is a total of 80 points. And here we have the Fury Brothers, with a quality of three up, a defense of two up. They carry only close combat weapons that have two attacks. They have the Frenzy ability, which means they get plus 2 melee attacks when charging, giving them a total of 4 attacks when they hit melee combat. Each one of them is 30 points per model, bringing the total of the Havoc Warriors to 410 points. Now for the objective of the game. The Human Defense Force must hold the line and make sure none of the opposition passes them, and if they do, that means the Human Defense Force has lost the game. As for the objective for the Havoc Brothers, they must simply uh, reach the objective, pass them, or kill everybody. A detachment of the Human Defense Force responded to an SOS transmission coming from a shanty town, not too deep underground. As they arrived, to their horror, they saw hundreds of people laying dead in the makeshift streets. Yet still, gunfire could be heard. They rushed to the noise and joined forces with a Temple Brother and a Battle Sister. These two were standing strong against a myriad of adversaries. The detachment of infantry squads joined the fight as they were informed that more reinforcements would be arriving soon. They just had to hold out till they get here. This place they are holding is the last line of defense to the inner city. The human defense force must hold out until the reinforcements arrive. So we have the red dice for uh, the Havoc Brothers and we have the blue dice for the Human Defense Force. Now we get to the roll-off in which the Havoc Brothers uh, seize the initiative and they can activate a model first. So I activate my Havoc Lord first, making him rush forward 12 inches. Then we're going over to the Human Defense Force, activating my infantry squad here of three. Um, I'm not going to make them perform any actions this round, they're going to remain steady and hold their position. And when I've done that, I'm going to place an activation token next to them, marking that they have already moved this turn. And I forgot to do that for the Havoc Lord, so I'm going to place an activation token next to him right now as well. Next up, I'm activating my Fury Brother. He's going to rush forward 12 inches, positioning himself next to the Havoc Lord. I'm putting down an activation token beside him as well. Moving over to the other side of the battlefield, it is time to activate another member of the Human Defense Force. And I'm going to activate my Battle Sister. She's also going to rush forward 12 inches, positioning herself on top of the container. I'm putting down an activation token beside her as well. And now I'm going to activate this unit of cultists right here. 
my unit of cultists rushed forward 12 inches ending their activation now I'm going to activate uh, my temple brother here and he's going to make a rush movement positioning himself next to the armored container ending his activation and I'm going to put down a activation token as well next up is the Havoc Destroyer now the Havoc Destroyer is going to fire his twin assault rifles they have a range of 24 inches they have two attacks and an armor piercing of three he's going to aim it at the temple brother and he shoots both are a hit now the temple brother defeats uh, defends both hits and nothing happens ending the activation of the havoc destroyer the human defense force is going to activate their final models rushing them forward 12 inches ending their activation on top of the high ground next up i'm going to activate the remainders of all my havoc uh, brothers i'm rushing forward all my havoc brother models 12 inches my cultists rushing them forward as well putting down the activation tokens beside them though it is pointless because this is the end of the first round and I'm going to have to remove the activation tokens in a second so yeah Activating my final cultists, rushing them forward 12 inches as well, ready to do battle. Round 2, remove the activation tokens. Now we roll off to see who gets the initiative, and it's again the Havoc Brothers. The battle sister rolls to defend but fails. She takes the hit and she dies, ending the activation of a very happy Havoc Lord. We put down the marker. In the meantime, we now turn over to the Temple Brother who is going to activate by charging the Havoc Lord. He rolls his attacks, one hits. The Havoc Lord rolls to defend, but fails due to the armor piercing of the energy sword and he takes one wound. The Havoc Lord strikes back, but he misses. Now we're going to move up our human defense force. They're gonna move up uh, six inches and they're gonna attempt to shoot at the Havoc Lord. Now, I forgot one thing, and that is to use a different uh, colored dice for the sniper. Now, this group of the human defense force is gonna take up aim and shoot at the Havoc Lord. They all hit. I did forget, as I said, the colored dice, but the Havoc Taking Lord him down takes to one, one wound. wound. And I'm placing an activation token beside the unit. Next up, our Fury Brother is gonna charge at the Temple Brother. That's a 12 inch. He can easily cross the, the barrier, jumping over it to attack the Temple Brother.
four attacks incoming due to frenzy ability. The Temple Brother rolls to defend. He only had to roll two dices, not three. But they are all okay. Now he's going to attempt to strike back at the Fury Brother. Hitting on only sixes because he already activated this turn. But he misses. Now I'm gonna activate this Havoc Brother. And he's going to do an illegal move and he's going to cross the void to get to the other part of the terrain. I don't know what I was thinking here. He should have ended up on top of the terrain and not go this way, but ah, still. First battle report, still learning guys, sorry. And that ends his activation. Now these guys are going to move forward 6 inches, getting ready to intercept the Void Walking Havoc Brother. Getting into position here. And ending their activation. Now this mutated destroyer is gonna blast his twin guns at the Temple Brother. The mutated destroyer attacks, two hits, and the temple brother defends one but takes one wound and he dies. Ending the activation of the mutated destroyer. Next up this unit of cultists is gonna charge, well rush forward actually like madmen, getting closer to the objective spitting in the face of the temple brother as he lays there dying let's remove the activation token of the temple brother and place it back to the cultist the human defense force is, see, is seeing what's coming now the human defense force has no more units to activate so i'm gonna continue to activate uh, the rest of the of the Havoc Brothers models, beginning with this group of uh, cultists who are also going to rush forward. Things are not looking good for the Human Defense Force, I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna be right honest with that. Now these Havoc Brothers are also rushing forward. The other Havoc Brother not bothering putting down any activation tokens because these are the only ones left to move these cultists as well it's getting a little crowded here It's about time to go to the uh, other turn. Reinforcements have arrived. Let's hope they can turn the tide for the human defense force. And here we are. Uh, <clears throat> here are a couple of uh, battle brothers. Being deployed here. Their leader is also coming. The captain. Here he is. Sorry about the shaky cam. Here is the captain of the Battle Brothers. We roll off for the third round. Havoc Brothers again taking the initiative. Beginning with our mutated destroyer who sees the reinforcements and charges straight at them. Getting into their face. Two attacks incoming of the energy fist and they both hit. Defense fails. The Battle Brother takes a heavy hit of the Energy Fist and dies. Ending the turn of the Mutated Destroyer, who, who literally obliterated the Battle Brother. Next up, uh, the other Battle Brother next to him is going to r run forward, getting away from the Mutated Destroyer, but also trying to intercept the uh, cultists who are rushing towards the objective. And he moves up. The Battle Brother takes aim and shoots at the Havoc Lord. 
he hits, rolling to defend, but he fails and that takes down the last wound of the Havoc Lord. That's one happy battle brother who just annihilated the leader of the Havoc Brothers. He's up for a promotion everyone. If he survives that is. Ending his activation. Next up will be the cultists who just saw their leader being shut down and they are furious and aiming themselves now at the battle brother who killed their leader. The cultists aim and shoot but all miss. And this ends their activation. Next up another battle brother is going to rush forward to his to his friend. Well rush move forward so he still can shoot. He aims at the cultists. Shoots and he hits. Trying to defend. Nope, that's one dead cultist. Ending the activation of this battle brother as well. So here we have another uh, squad of cultists who are going to charge up at the uh, human defense force. They're really gonna charge and getting close up to melee combat. Trying to get to the objective. Cultists roll to hit. And two heavy hits. Close combat weapons. Human Defense Force is going to attempt to defend it. And they do exquisitely. Two times sixes cancelling each other out. A six is always considered a success. But so are the defense. So Perfect. Ending the activation of the cultists here. Now next up the human defense force is going to move back an inch, getting out of melee combat. And they're gonna take aim and shoot at the cultists. Also closing uh, the gap, trying to defend uh, them from breaching through. The human defense force is taking aim at the cultists. The green die is being for the sniper, but two misses. One assault rifle hits though. Now the cultists are going to attempt to defend it, but fail. The shot killed one cultist. And this ends the activation of the human defense force, placing the token down next to them. Next up we're going to activate one of our Havoc brothers here. Let's see if they can make the charge. And yes they can. So this Havoc Brother is going to charge up against the Human Defense Force. Rolls to hit and he hits. Trying to defend it. But he fails and that kills one of the soldiers. Ending the activation of the Havoc Brother. Now next up we have another battle brother who is going to charge up next to his companions. Takes aim. <coughs> Excuse me. Easy getting the distance, I don't know why I'm measuring this, but... And he rolls to hit. But he misses. Ending the activation. Not doing as well as his former companions. Now next up another Havoc uh, brother is going to uh, activate and charge up one of the soldiers of the Human Defense Force. Getting up close and personal with his close combat weapon. And he hits. Willing to defend. Nope, he kills the soldier, taking down another member of the Human Defense Force. This is not looking good at all for them. Ending his activation. Next up are other units of um, the Human Defense Force. They're gonna take up aim. No, the Havoc Brothers are getting the 
benefit of cover that they are aiming here they do have the high ground but they are getting the benefit of cover so that's uh, minus one to hit so the soldiers are hitting on the six plus and the sniper on the three plus now the sniper does aim and takes the shot and he hits trying to defend it but the Havoc Brother defends it ending their activation next up we're going to activate our Fury Brother who is looking around if there is someone he can uh, carve up and he finds another soldier that is his victim for this attack he's gonna charge straight at him incoming four attacks on the soldier four attacks incoming to hit trying to defend but he doesn't and he kills the last of the soldier of this unit the captain now activates charging at the mutated destroyer two hits Rolling to defend, to defend, nope, just one hit and taking down the mutated destroyer to one wound, ending the captain's activation. Next up, I'm going to activate this unit of cultists, making them rush forward closer to the objective. Things are not looking good for the human defense force. Oh yeah, I'm going to make uh, two big mistakes in uh, about 30 seconds. And one is um, I activate a battle brother while there is still a havoc brother left which I totally forgot about and um, the other is the biggest mistake is that I hit the mutated destroyer with a six and I rolled to defend it and he rolled a five as you will see in a minute on the screen he rolled to the, so his defense is okay yet I still took him down as a casualty which is ridiculous because okay you a natural six as you can see here is always an automatic hit but you can still defend against it so this is where I make the biggest mistake of the game, which are plenty in this game, I believe. But it's my first battle report, so I apologize, guys. See, this is a mistake and he should still be standing. Ending, here is the end of this Battle Brothers activation. And here is the little guy I forgot. So he's climbing up the ladder, moving forward, getting ready into position. To shoot going into the roll off or round four and this time the human defense force takes uh, the initiative and I'm gonna start with these guys getting closer to uh, to their targets <coughs> excuse me they're gonna take aim at the cultists trying to uh, stop them from reaching the the objective and they hit nicely that's one defense so one guy goes down normally see there we go one guy goes down but that ends their activation and there is nothing they can do from keeping them from rushing forward and winning the game now let's look at the casualties here on the human defense force side And let's look at the casualties on the Havoc Brothers side. The Havoc Brothers won this battle and now gain access to the inner city. I thank you all for watching this battle report and sticking through till the end if you're still here. And I apologize for the many, many mistakes. As I said, this is my first time filming a battle report, but uh, I'll try to do better next time. So thanks for your patience. Thank you for watching. And... Well, see you next time. Bye.